Welcome. Um, so yeah, so um, the last maybe a month or so, I've had some uh, time to look into like writing my own OS from scratch. It was like, a, I've wanted to do this for like ages now. <laughs> but I never really had the time or, or I always found it a little bit daunting and I didn't really start it. And then uh, lately it was a bit, uh, not too exciting over on the other things that I've been working on. So I decided to give this one a go and uh, really just try to uh, work something out. Um, so uh, so what is this session about? It's, it's mostly going to be history. So what I did, I was just uh, playing around with trying to write an OS for uh, the x86 architecture. And it's mostly just the legacy stuff. Uh, so we're going to um, look at things that are not really up to date and not really used, but they still relevant because while well, the x86 is quite backward compatible, so you can still develop code on your today machine to be to as as an 886 if you want to. Uh, but it's not very pleasant, but you can do it. Um, so yeah, so uh, I will. It's going to be quite light. Uh, with, the, with the slides and then once those are over we can i can show you a little bit more on uh like a demo on, on what i did um but we're gonna try it to history so because it's i think it's quite interesting to see so first we're gonna jump back to 1975 <laughs> because uh well that's when uh well the vietnam war ended so it's kind of important and also they invented the vhs my favorite format of videos. And um, that's when uh, Gary Kildall came up with the, uh, the idea of the BIOS, uh, which, uh, which is, which is a, a basic input-output system, which, was, uh, which is still on there on your, uh, on your computers. And it's essentially just a, just a firmware and gives you a set of instructions to make your life easier. Um, and also does some of the stuff which we will talk about a little bit later. The chip there is from uh, as you can see, it's from 1986, if you can see it. Uh, so it's a little bit uh, like 10 years later. Uh, so probably he wasn't using any kind of stuff like this. But this is an app here, and then I put the picture there because this is, this is the stuff that was on my first computer. And it's an app here because it, it can be programmed, but uh, to program it, you had to uh, expose it to UV light and then it was it you could you could actually rewrite uh your bias through that so it was that's fun uh yeah so after that the next stop we're gonna look at is 78 this is when uh well the first tribes of garfield appeared and they released the space invaders uh, <laughs> uh, and also they uh they came out with the uh, 8086 with and the uh, x86 architecture um yeah, so let's take a look at a little bit on some of the specs of the um, of the eighty eighty six, and because these are going to be important when we we're gonna get uh, and start writing go around uh, uh, boot sector. Um, so yeah, it was backward compatible, uh, really back to the eight zero zero five, uh, which is an eight which is an eight bit microprocessor. Um, it had 16-bit registers, uh, which was huge at that time, and the and and one of the big things was it had a 20-bit address uh, space, which uh, which well, I can't have a pointer here, can I? So, uh, which if you look at the right side on the, on the diagram, you can see like AD uh, from zero to 19, which was actually so the so the 20-bit address space meant that you can actually uh, address 20 bits of uh, two to 20 bits of memory, which means like about one megabyte, which was huge at that time. Uh, but in physically, that meant like it had like 20 lines going into the microprocessor. Um, yeah. So on the, so the registers itself are only 16 bits, um, which is quite important because um, the Intel engineers had to come up with a way that you can use those 16 bit registers to actually, you know, try to access all the 20 bits of memory. So they come up with this, um, well, segmentation of the memory, segmentation model, which, uh, uh, which you can use. And then I'll go talk about here. This is important because we will need to use it when we, when we go and boot it into the 16-bit driven mode. So it's uh, good to understand it. 
Uh, it's just a small example, like on the left, for example. Um, so what they did is that um, you had a base and an offset. The base address was uh, uh, in on, on the uh, x86 was uh, represented by uh, different segmentation registers. So you could push in a value, like in my case, that um, thousand hexadecimal. Um, and then, well, it was just one in hexadecimal, but then uh, it been shifted by four bits to the left, which, uh, which is similar to multiplying by 16. Uh, and then had to add um, the, um, the offset, which was just an additional register. And then uh, you could get, um, you could go and address a little bit over a megabyte memory. Um, so this is it. They could overlap. So if you see the other examples on the right too, I don't know if you can see, because I can't see my mouse anymore. So you can move stuff around. <laughs> yeah, but it just doesn't show my mouse. <laughs> anyway, um, so what you can see on the right two examples is that uh, these segment, uh, segments can actually overlap, uh, which makes it quite uh, hard for compilers to optimize against them. So you would need to keep in mind, and uh, I guess that's why Offset-based uh, addressing didn't. It was it's a pain <laughs> to use it. So not uh, it's not uh, it's just not great. It's like later on you will see that uh, they um, trying to move away from this. Um, so let's turn on your machine. Let's let's pretend that we have an eighty eighty six, and uh, and see see what 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 are the things that are happening uh, at this point. Um, so first. Uh, the first thing that's going to happen is that the BIOS from the real firmware chip is going to be loaded into memory. And then uh, that's going to start its uh, post check, which is, um, what does it stand for? Power on self-test. So it will go and check the memory, it will check uh, the periphery, as are working, etc. And after that, uh, it will try to load the, um, uh, the master boot record. Um, so, what is the master boot record? So the master boot record is a very specific record on any of the uh, any of the like hard drives or mediums like floppy disk that you've got. Uh, it has to be the first sector on any disk that you insert, and it has to be 512 byte long. And uh, the last two bytes must contain a magic number, uh, which is the zero uh, x. AA55. I don't know why this is the specific number that they picked, but um, actually interesting. I will try to look it up. So if you want to write a, uh, this in assembly, well, in an assembler, because you don't have anything else at that point, you will have to write it in an assembler. Or you could just use a boot loader and get through it, but we are in, in an 8086 in 78, so I don't think you can do that. So what you do need to do is, um, um, the most basic uh, boot sector that you can write is, uh, is what you can see down there. All it does is just jumps forever. It's pretty much like an endless loop over there. And, uh, and after that, like a couple of uh, 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 assembler instructions just to put it to be 512 byte long, and then it inserts the on the last two bytes, it inserts the magic number. And then if you go and, um, uh, while on Mac, you can use an XXD on it, uh, command which will uh, print it out in hex, uh, hexadecimal values for you, then uh, you can see the, the first uh, line there is the opcode, it's for the jump forever, pretty much. And then the last, you can see the 50 by AA. Uh, that's not a typo, it is, it is, it is indeed reversed because the x86 architecture is a little endian, so you will get the least significant uh, bytes in front after the more significant ones. And so if you write this and then um, uh, you use your assembler and then compile it into a binary and then put it in a, uh, on a floppy disk, then it will, it will, this will boot up into, into, into and do, does nothing. And um, yeah. So this is pretty much probably the first thing that you want to do. Um, 
so let's have a look at how does this, uh, how does the memory uh, look once you, uh, once you, once you load it in. Um, so, so once this happened, you are in 16-bit real mode, which 16-bit um, real mode because you have access to uh, the 16-bit registers. On 8086, there wasn't anything else, but you will see that from 386, you can access 32-bit registers. Uh, but you will need to do some extra steps to be able to use those. So, um, so what you're gonna get, you're gonna get the BS interrupts, uh, and um, so the, they're going to be. So this is the memory on the on the right, and as you can see from uh, zero to four hundred, you will get the uh, interrupt vector table loaded for the for the BIOS. So what it does is that um, uh, you can send the uh, interrupt request. Uh, to the BIOS, and then the BIOS uh, will tell the processor to stop doing uh, what you were doing, and then uh, call the routine that's registered for that interrupt. Um, uh, I will I will show one or two later on. Um, right about that is the BIOS data. So um, I'm 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 showing you this because it's important because um, all the things that loaded in real mode. So you're going to access the memory. Uh, the physical addresses as they are. Um, so there are no virtualization or, or anything else on top of it. So you are actually addressing the physical memory at this point. Um, and you need to be careful where you're writing your data when you, when you start writing your code because you can overwrite the interrupt vector table or device data array or any of those. And then you essentially crash your machine. Um, right. So once we got here, uh, the, the next thing you will probably want to do is, uh, well, load a kernel, which will actually do stuff uh, that you want to do. Uh, first, probably you need to write a kernel. So I, I choose, uh, choose C, and it's a personal choice of what you want to use. Uh, to write your kernel in nowadays, but the only thing that you probably need to be mindful is that you need to uh, need to going to use a very stripped down version uh, of the language. So you will need to get rid of most of the libraries that are available for you because um, because a lot of them are using uh, OS specific stuff and uh, things that rely on certain uh, um, things the uh, the other OS is done. So you, we need to get rid of those. Um, so yeah, uh, I picked C just because I had some previous experience with C um, and I didn't want to spend too much time uh, learning a new language as well because that was not the aim of, of my, my research, I guess. Uh, but uh, later I will start assembling some people does it in Rust. So they, they quite ahead, I think. So they, uh, it's, they have also a really good blog post and then Someone, uh, someone is trying to do it in Go. <laughs> so there are some exotic options there if you, if you want to oh, no, 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 spice it up. Right, um, so when you're here, uh, as I said, uh, you need to write your kernel. And I'm gonna, I did forget to add it, but um, so a very minimal kernel that again does nothing would, let's go here, would look, something like this, it's just doing nothing. Uh, mind you that this is not the main function that you would usually get in a, in a C environment. It's, it's, this is just an entry function. Uh, the only caveat probably is that, so when you're gonna load the kernel, you're going to load it up to a memory address, uh, and then you're going to jump to that memory address, and then uh, you're, you're essentially going to go and uh, start processing stuff from that memory address. So <clears throat> if you write this in C and then you go and compile it, uh, that's all fine. But if you start adding some other stuff, like uh, you add an additional function on over the top of the start kernel, then it will go into that function first because it's, it's just a memory address. And then things laid out as, as you lay them out on, on the, on the uh, in code. Uh, so what you can do, you can um, add like a little bit of assembly code again, which will be, uh, you will need to always um, attach to the very beginning of your binary, of, of your kernel. And then that will tell you that like, um, hey, you can call, this is the entry point to the kernel. And then 
uh, that's that's where you should actually start uh, processing, uh, start executing your code from. And, and then this is always going to be sitting in the front when you go and link them together. And then, um, yeah, um, that's how you will know you're the right place. Um, so right, so up until here, uh, we, we've been uh, 16 bit mode and in, in, in real mode. Uh, so you can write an operating system in, in, uh, in real mode in 60-bit if you want to. Uh, DOS, for example, is one of those examples that are out there, and then it's a 16-bit real mode operating system. Uh, but uh, well, we didn't really want it to stop there because I wanted to write something at least slightly more useful, I guess. <laughs> um, um, so we need to jump ahead a little bit in time uh, to the uh, 386, which, as I mentioned uh, previously, it introduced uh, uh, 32 bit registers. It um, also did some additional stuff. So uh, it introduced paging as well and memory protection. But memory, uh, hardware memory protection was introduced in with the T286 uh, a little bit before. Um, I will talk about that as well. Um, so, right. So, um, so you're here. Uh, in 16-bit mode, so you so you loaded your kernel uh, into the memory with the help of the BIOS, and uh, now you want to switch to 32-bit protected mode. Um, right. So uh, to do that, you will need to do a couple of things. The first one is you need to load the um, global desktop table, which is uh, which was so as I mentioned, no one really liked uh, the the way people were doing offsets, offset calculation, plus it's, it was, uh, there was no, nothing, no hardware protection over it. So when you um, access the memory address that you were not supposed to, then your uh, system could just crash. Um, so what they did with the 286, they introduced the global descriptive table, which is a data structure uh, where each of, these uh, segment descriptor descriptors will, um, it's the same addressing essentially. So you still got the, the base and then the offset addressing, but instead uh, what you're gonna say, you're gonna say that uh, you're going to reference uh, code and data segments from the descriptor table. And then uh, you access the different segments of the memory through the descriptor table. Uh, but it was a big, uh, so what it did, it added also like um, uh, protection over those segments. So you could um, set up uh, different flags, flags, sorry, uh, where you can say that, um, okay, you shouldn't be able to access uh, this specific area uh, from where you are at the moment. Um, but anyway, so what this one does is just a flat, uh, uh, just a flat setup. So all it does, it's the, the code and the data segment it's pointing to the same uh, same area, and and the whole thing is just uh, it's also like in four uh, four uh, kilobyte bits, so you can address the whole uh, memory that way. Uh, but anyway, so one of the uh, things that you have to do is uh, to define the GDT and then uh, load it uh, into memory, and then that's how you can. Uh, uh, yeah. You need to disable interrupts when you do the switching because it's just something you have to do. And then is the uh, aforementioned jump to the kernel space where you, where you need to jump to the kernel and then actually enter into the, into the code where your kernel is running. Uh, so I use my boot sector. It does a couple of other stuff as well, uh, but um, just to quickly grow through so I uh, so this is when you arrive to 16-bit. Uh, it prints a welcome message. Um, it's very exciting on that. Uh, and then it loads the kernel, which is uh, just, uh, just this function. Uh, the only thing is, yeah, I mentioned this uh, int uh, 0x13, which is a BIOS, and BIOS and interrupt that I call. And uh, that will load uh, the amount of predefined uh, sectors into the memory uh, to, 
to what I defined as valid. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, I think I can. Oh, no, I haven't checked. Is it good? Yeah, it is. So right, so this is where I load the current kernel. Uh, I load it to uh, to the one megabyte memory mark. So if you we go back to this one, uh, so I load it up to up there um, because so if so here you have about that much memory free. So if while your kernel is small, it's enough. But as soon, as long when you, uh, especially if you write like a monolithic kernel, then uh, it's gonna get can get quite big. So you need to put it in a space where you won't override anything else. So I load it up to the one megabyte uh, mark, and it can grow up from there. Uh, that, and then we switch thirty two bit, which is as I mentioned it. There's a few stuff. So uh, you have to disable the interrupt, as I mentioned. Um, so it, you're not going to get an interrupt by switching to 32-bit mode because that would be bad. Uh, then you load the, the, uh, the descriptor table that I've showed. And then uh, you're going to go and jump to the uh, wherever you loaded the kernel. And pretty much that's the end of uh, hopping into the kernel. So what to do after that? Uh, so the first thing I did uh, was um, you, could, you could start with writing a display driver. I did start with that as well, because um, it's good if you can print something on the screen and then you know that it's actually working or doing something. Um, the next bit I did uh, was actually uh, doing some uh, I did the keyboard driver, I think. Um, so I can do some more stuff with the keyboard, although it's not really used for anything at the moment because I'm not there yet. Um, then paging, it's going to get important. And we'll be with this, this driver and file system because virtual memory, if you want to use it, you will need to have some implementation of, of a disk. <laughs> so you can mop the memory onto the disk as well. Um, so yeah, that's sort uh, of So uh, this is the entry point where I go. And then so you don't really have anything. So even if you do want to do a clear screen, you're going to have to go and implement that yourself. Uh, so memory, uh, so this is the uh, display driver. And then it's going to be, all it is is just a, a, a certain memory location uh, where you can uh, put characters to. And then, because uh, it's uh, VGS 25 by 80 big, so that's that's the memory address. And then all you do is uh, well, copying memory over, and then you're putting, putting the, uh, uh, the different stuff in there, and then cleaning the memory bits, and that's it. Then the keyboard driver. The keyboard is, um, is a bit, well, hmm. interrupts maybe then. So you need to uh, implement the interrupts, which is, um, uh, there, is a, there is a chip called uh, PIC, which is, um, what's that for? Interrupt controller, yes. Um, um, so as an interesting stuff, uh, so the first 34, 35 interrupts is, uh, it's kept up for the CPU uh, for stuff like the, 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 uh, dividing by zero and uh, I don't know, uh, page forwards and stuff like that. Uh, so that is kept up for the CPU. Uh, but uh, when they added the, the PIC, uh, Intel engineers didn't, uh, well, I guess they didn't remap it, they didn't set it up correctly. And the first thing that you have to do is uh, initialize it and then remap the, uh, the uh, interrupt uh, to be about the first 35. Otherwise, you're going to get 
it will be sending interrupts on the first 15 uh, interrupts as well as the CPU does, and then it can get into a little bit of trouble. So uh, yeah, that's interesting, just interesting stuff running. Um, the other interesting thing is, is memory. So, um, so you load it up here, and then you're not going to have any, um, um, any memory management. So, I mean, in, in C, it means malloc or, all, uh, or realloc or anything like that. It's not just doesn't, it's not going to, doesn't exist. So you can do static memory allocations. Uh, so you need to implement that yourself. Uh, there are different ways to do it. Uh, so what you need to, uh, so I did a, I don't know, I guess I went a bit uh, uh, off the charts with this one, but uh, so one of, so, so there are really two things that you need to consider when you are uh, writing your memory manager. One is that, uh, like how quickly you can, uh, uh, allocate memory, how quickly you can free memory. And uh, you, if you're going to get any memory uh, fragmentation. And so one of the ways to actually do memory management is by link, for example, linked list. So what you would do is that you build your linked list. And then um, when, you, when you try to allocate some memory, you, let's say, um, say I do on my kernel. Uh, like uh, I want to allocate uh, memory for an int. Uh, that would that would mean that you need uh, four bytes in memory allocated somewhere. Um, so to do that, uh, what you can do you can do like a simple linked list implementation. So you go, uh, you just have a linked list, and then uh, you say that like, mm, okay, I allocated four four bytes, and then you keep up a four byte space on that structure. Uh, and then you go and allocate, let's say eight bytes and so on and so forth. So you're gonna get a linked list and each of them points after each other, obviously with the number of allocations that you've got. And that's all fine. So when you free, you will need to find uh, the location that you want to free. And then you want to be able to reuse that memory that you freed up. And if you, if you don't do it, um, so anyway, you can get memory fragmentations because you allocate these four bytes somewhere here in the middle. I didn't create any. And then um, you free that up and then you allocate two bytes. Then it's going to be the first that it finds it allocates two bytes. You're gonna have two bytes taken and you're gonna have another two byte box, which is still free, et cetera. So that's gonna end up being fragmented. And then you will need to go and merge them as well. So what I did is, did is something different because what I did, just created these uh, pre-allocated sizes for different. Uh, so, for example, I have a big bucket for one byte, two byte, four byte, eight byte, sixteen, and thirty-two byte uh, uh, chunks of memory. So, when something comes in, and when I do an allocation that is, for example, four bytes, and it will go to this when it's. Uh, let's say uh, 18 bytes, then it will go to the 32-byte uh, memory pool. And this works like a cache because these, these are already created on initialization. And then what you do is just like, by the size, kind of like a map as well, because by the size you can find uh, which memory bucket you're going to go and then you can just quickly find um, a place where you can allocate memory. Um, yeah, so maybe, show you that it's actually doing stuff, stuff as well. <laughs> so it is here, it started up, but you can't do much with it. Then. So you, uh, as I showed you can do memory allocations and that's what I was just testing there. And keyboard works some bit, but it's just uh, printing back what you typed and pretty much that's it. So the next thing I'm working on is really just set up paging. Uh, I don't know, after that, um, I'm gonna do some serial comports because then you cannot touch a termi uh, uh, terminal emulators to it. 
as well. So it gets a bit easier, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, I, I might, you might be asking like, why would you do this? Because it's a musty waste of time. But uh, I don't know, I did find it fun uh, uh, to do it. And I think you can learn quite a lot. And as, as soon as after you went through the, the whole boot, uh, process which is a bit tedious to do to be honest uh, you're gonna get to to places where you can learn a lot about uh, like paging virtual memory uh, that's all data structures and how can you you know you do it better so I think it's quite interesting uh, from 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 that point after that also like processes how do they really work and then you know how can you do multi-threading and things like that so it's uh, um, so I think it's quite a lot of things to do and it's, it's just interesting um, Obviously, this is not a very usable OS. It's just for learning purposes. I try to do it in a way that, you know, if someone else wants to do it, then there's a documentation so you can have a look. And, and it's probably easier, although there are quite a lot of good resources on the internet on this. So it's, um, it's fun. But um, oh yeah, do you have any questions? There are some good tutorials, so you don't really go out blinded but some of the so up from the kernel like the memory management that's mine uh then loading to one megabyte uh while i went a lot there's a, like os dev wiki page which is really good and then that can be helpful it's mostly like a collection of uh, references and like small examples and stuff how can you do um but i mostly follow this guy ah uh, it's gonna be Frank Rosner, I think he's um... so there is a book as well. Uh, this, which is really good, up to a certain point. Cheers. But because this one is finishes after it loaded up the kernel, uh, so but the beginning is really good on that. And then there is, as I mentioned, this Frank Rosner guy. He got a little bit further. Oh, ah, yeah. yeah. And he has uh, all kind of stuff in there as well. Mm -hmm. which is, and he also gives like really good uh, descriptions and stuff. So, And there are various other ones as well. So if you want to do it, you can you really can do, for example, on memory management. Uh, here it's more about the, uh, the paging and how can you do it. Although this is more of a, um, Theory, kind of, instead of being more concrete. But, um, but yeah, there are quite a lot of resources. Uh, put on the uh, the other project. This one is really good, this Rust one. I was like tempted to follow them through, but uh, I don't have much Rust knowledge, so I went with the more traditional one. But this is this is really good. They they uh, they are further away as well, so they've got like a thing now on the way, and it, they have a really good blog post around it. So I, I love this one. Uh, and I haven't looked too much into this. I just like, oh, yeah, there is one for Go as well. <laughs> if anyone is fancy doing that stuff. Yeah, that, that, that was all. If you have any questions or anything. Mm -hmm.